Hello and welcome to today's video. Here we are at the London Paperback Show. Absolutely manic here today. It's, well, words fail me. I cannot wait to dive in and show you what's on offer. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so look at the queue. They were right out the door all the way through um, the hotel, through the, hot, the lobby, the reception area, and queuing right in to get into the, uh, the paperback and of course the ephemera show as well. So double the attendees this time round. As you can see, there was a fair old few people waiting, which is always a good sign. The doors opened at 9.30 and uh, Quite handy having it in, a, in the hotel because there was like a coffee shop on site as well If you fancy getting a coffee just inside here all these books on these tables were three pound a book Any book you like at the end of the day just a pound a book if you can believe it and There was loads of really really nice stuff there just didn't have a chance to go through it properly But it was there if you uh, fancied it three pound to get into the show And now we're going to be interviewing Stephen Jones there. There he is in front of his stall. We'll have a look at his stall whilst we uh, have a chat with him now. Today I'm joined by Steve. We're here at the London Paperback Show. Absolutely fantastic. It looks like it's going to be a fantastic show. It's been a long time coming. It has. How long since the last one? Well, there was, there was a sort of mini one just after the lockdowns finished, right. um, which was held just down the road from here, actually. Yes, um, but it was just the paperback and pulp part of it. Mm. And it was held in a, a student's union. So it wasn't kind of ideal. Yeah. Um, but I've been going to these things since the early 90s when they were held in Victoria. Yeah. Because um, I've always been a fan. So yeah, I, was, yeah. I was getting books signed you know, by Sid Bounds and people like that yeah. um, back in the day. Um, and I'm not a book dealer, as you no. can probably understand. But you've got a very nice table there. But it's just, it's just yeah. spares. I mean, right. doubles, uh, right. base doubles and spares and, and things. I mean, the problem is my house, as, as you know, Dorset Bob will tell you, mm -hmm. is full of books. It's been full of books for 40, 50 years. Yeah, and they're on the floor, they're on surfaces, yeah. in the attic, they're everywhere. And at my age, it's time to start downsizing and to start concentrating on the books I want to keep and the, and the magazines I want to keep and the comics I want to keep. Yeah. And yeah, we all reach that point in you know, life at one point yeah. where you really decide what's going to happen to it. I mean, when I was growing up, and I'm sure when you were growing up, Jules, you know, we used to, um, we used to like buy the stuff, accumulate this stuff, and never think about what was going to happen to it when we're gone. But it, yeah, it's true, and I know lots of friends who are even older than me now, and I feel quite old. I'm 54 this year, but I've got friends who are 60 or just above, even pushing 70 now, and yeah, well, they really. Well, they don't. Well, they certainly don't it. look. It's, yeah, Thank but, you. Um, <laughs> they, they don't have an active actual plan in place. They've and just and of course, the other thing, which is, a, course, which is a problem, yeah. Yeah. is. We've got fewer bookstores now, so you can't sell the bookstores. Like, like Fancy yeah. Centre used to be the place I used to go in London all yeah, the time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the prices are going down, not up. So things we bought back in the day, which we thought were you know collectors' items, yeah. there's no need to collect them anymore because, as you said, the, the older dealers are dying off. The younger people are into different are into different things. You know? um, I mean, luckily there are still people, and like yourself in a way, who collect for the sake of collecting. You, you yeah. collect all the numbers. You collect. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah, completed. Whereas I grew up with collecting authors or, or types yeah. of stories. Sure, yeah. So, I mean, unlike you, all my books are in alphabetical order for the under author. Under the author. So yeah. I can find them. And of course, for me, it was a working um, library yeah. because doing all the anthologies, I needed to be able to find the stories. Now, of course, that's changed now because in the only place you could find stories in old magazines or old books. Now it's all either online or the authors will send you a file with yeah. the story on. So the whole way of doing this has changed. And so I kind of realised that, you know what, what's the point in keeping some of this stuff that you never really wanted in the first place? Yeah, that's, that's I mean, it's a good way of looking at it. I think I'm, uh, you know, I'm, like you say, the Penguin books, you know, if you collect the first thousand, you're going to get an awful lot that you're never, ever, ever going to want to read. Uh, and, and all the old crossword books and things like that. But I don't mind it because it's the completest thing. Well, also the collecting part. I mean, we've all yeah. got, I mean, like, the trouble with me is I, I collect comics, I collect monster magazines, I collect movie memorabilia, I collect mm. posters, I collect pulp magazines. 
hard covers, paperbacks, you know, it's everything. Um, and I've, I've always lived like that. I've lived that ever since I was a teenager. Mm. I had new posters on my wall, books on shelves. Um, and that's how I got to meet all the writers and editors and publishers yeah. at the time. I grew up in it. Yeah. Um, and that's been the wonderful thing. But you know, as I say, you know, when you're pushing 70, you start to think, oh, do I really need all this? You need a plan. You need a plan. plan. But also, I want to be surrounded by lovely things. Like I've said, that's yeah. the I mean, I know when you got one of your books, you say, oh, look at that shelf of badges, they're all lovely, yeah. all those lovely <laughs> yellow spines or whatever. Mm. Um, and I'm the same. I mean, I like to look at you know, a shelf of Arkham House books mm. and think, wow, you know, I've yeah. got you know, a pretty good, and most of them are signed as well, uh, the, the, you know, I grew up with those guys. Yeah. Um, so in that respect, it's kind of like, yeah, that's, that's the stuff I'm keeping. Yeah. But the other stuff, I mean, why do I need these paperback anthologies from the 90s? Yeah, well, you said, yeah, you said. But of course, that's now yeah. becoming vintage. 80s, 90s, 40 is, years. Yeah, 40 years is vintage. So whereas yeah. I know everybody likes to concentrate on the 50s and 60s mm. paperbacks yeah. and, and, and digest and whatever, and I think that's fine. Um, now I think people should start thinking about, oh, what about those 1980s door anthologies? Yeah, they're 35 years old now. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, and the horror ones. And the horror so ones. Well, Carl, my friend Carl Wagner is the mm. best horror which he did every year oh, for yeah, door yeah. books. Fantastic. You can't get the last four or five of those really anymore. They're, yeah. they're like the pan books, they're so expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. The SF ones, are, I've got all of the SF ones. Right. But the horror ones, I think, are the one out of all of them. They, they are very yeah. different. I mean, Carl used to give them to me every year when they came out. He would right. give me one you know, signed or whatever. And it, it was full of you know, friends of mine anyway, so that was kind of cool. Yeah. So I'm slowly. I never used to get stuff signed. When right. I'm a kid, it's yeah. only in the last 20 years it, it occurred to me yeah. I should be getting this stuff. So yeah. I didn't actually know these guys. Of course, yeah. it was already too late by then. Yeah. So already that first generation, Robert Block, Richard Matheson, all those guys were going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the worry, isn't it? Yeah. Well, even the young, I mean, you know, Peter Stroud is dead now, Carly yeah. Wagner is dead now, Dennis Escherson is dead now, Charles L. Grant is dead now. These are all the writers I grew up with, who new writers and younger writers back then, yeah. and they're gone. And, it, and yeah. well, I got some stuff signed, I certainly never got everything signed. No. no, well, missed opportunities, let me say. So you're here today, I've already filmed your table, because I think you were one of the first to use to set up. So I might have arrived a little too early, I might have eaten a little too early at this one. But I mean, you've got some really lovely stuff on the, on the table, you said it's all just your doubles. Yeah. It's just spare stuff, yeah, I mean, like everybody, I like you, I, I pick up stuff and it's an upgrade, it's an upgrade. And well, also because I've been doing a couple of the uh, Windy City Pulp and Paperback mm. conventions in Chicago, yeah. I've been selling British material yeah. into the Americans because they're desperate for because you can't find sure, it yeah. in there. Yeah, Certainly at the prices I'm putting them out. Yeah. And I think let's try, let's try doing the same thing here because yeah. I've never actually sold at this event before. I've only no. been a, I've only been a buyer um, and see if the American stuff would work the other way. Yeah, yeah, well, well, and again, it's all priced to sell. I don't want to take anything no. back. Um, and a few years ago, I sort of inherited uh, the British crime and horror writer Battle Coppers collection. Yeah, and that sort of added you know, several hundred more hardcovers yeah. and paperbacks yeah. and things to my my my, um, my collection. So I kind of upgraded my copies. Mm. Um, and then I've been selling those steadily in America, and people love them because I've got like a little uh, certificate of authenticity in it to say it's coming from the library of Basil Copper. That's good, yeah. Um, and some of them are his contributor copies, yeah. things which he had. Um, and that's gone down really well. So again, I've bought you know, the remainder of that collection. Is yeah. Today. Oh, brilliant. Well, I mean, it looks like it's going to be... I think it's going to be back. Yeah. I'm really glad it's back. And obviously, you know, as we're recording this, there are people queuing up outside. It's yeah, it soon filled up, didn't it? So that's good. I'm going to go out and um, film a bit of the queue in a minute. But um, I'm really glad. Um, now, as you know, um, I've covered the comic book. And uh, what's your next one? Um, well, you've had the Silverberg, which is... Silverberg, is, is that now just that's that's out? Yeah. That's out, and it just came out in the hard case hardcover last week, which is beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'm working on a big art book. I've already done the art of horror, the art of horror movies, and the art of pulp horror. Yeah. And I'm actually doing one on the art of horror videos. Okay. From the 80s and 90s, so yeah. all the video covers, the video sleeves. Because I was one of those guys who never got rid of my video, VHS. Right. Okay. I kept them all. Brilliant. And of course, 
course, you know, when DVD came in, they went, oh, we're getting rid of the VHS tapes. I just, put them, I just put them up in the attic, and they've been up there for 30, uh, 40 years. Mint. Right. So yeah. that's the basis of doing a new book. Fantastic. I've also got a new book coming out this Halloween called The Weird Tales Boys. And this was something that started off, I was going to do it as a little giveaway for my birthday, mm -hmm. when I'm doing birthday parties. Um, yeah. And it grew and grew and grew, and it's like 60,000 words. And so we've ended up doing it as a hardcover and a paperback. And it's basically a look at the careers of H.P. Lovecraft, Robbie Howard, and Tom Ashton Smith, and how their careers overlapped, and how they kind of knew each other. Yeah. And they, I mean, they all have tragic stories. I mean, they're all of them. And it's, it's just an interesting history. It kind of pulls the whole of that together. Right. Including, you know, the later stuff, the movies, the, you know, the, the, the series, all yeah. the re rediscoveries. Because, you know, I, when I was growing up in the 70s, Lovecraft was just coming back into fashion at that point. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a fascinating story. I wanted to get it down. And so that's coming out the Weird Tales Boys will be the, the, the Halloween book. And Les Edwards has done a wraparound dust jacket, okay, you know, yeah, Les yeah. From, the, from the old days of covers. Yeah. Um, Ramsey Campbell's done the introduction to it. Yeah. Um, and it's filled with pulp covers and book covers and pages from Weird Tales yeah. and all sorts of things. So it's another beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I'll take your copy when it comes out, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then next year I'm doing three volumes of the best of weird tales oh, uh, yeah. basically the the, the the 20s versions the 30s and 40s versions of the league and, and some of the classic reprints and we're probably going to end up doing that in a slip case it was all three oh, books lovely, yeah. but here's the actions of the covers uh, we, uh, we've touched the covers inside and maybe even color like we did yeah, the that'd be lovely, yeah. but here's the thing jules i've been planning this book for 20 years yeah so it's signed it's signed by Richard Matheson, oh, it's signed by Ray Bradbury, wow. it's signed by Gayon Wilson. Yeah. We got the sheet signed 10, 15, wow. 20 years really? ago. So this, it's, it's a big project and yeah, that's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. I was hoping to have it out this year because it's the centenary of Weird Tales this year. Right. It was too much work to get it done, which is why the Weird Tales boys is coming out as a sort of stopgap. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so we're going to have signed Oh, amazing, brand man. new book, cool. which is pretty cool actually. You'll be able to put a good price on it. I I hope so, I yeah. hope so. But it's going to be, I mean, and always, with my books, always, mm. we'll do less expensive versions for people. Just, yeah. So it's always. And I'm not one of those guys who wants, you know, here's a £300 special slipcase signed doodle edition. I want people to be able to read the books. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was like thinking about doing the Mammoth books back in the day for Robinson. Yeah. You know, we used to turn those out at like, you know, 5.99 for you know, 250 yeah, pages, yeah. 300 pages, whatever they were. Because um, it was a way of getting those stories out to people to read. Brilliant. And that's the most important part. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for the chat, Steve. You're very welcome. Um, yeah. So now we're back at the ephemera fair. I showed you a little bit of that whilst uh, the Stephen Jones interview was going on. And um, I was quite pleased to f come across these, which uh, were quite nice to see in the flesh. These are um, old London underground and London transport maps. They didn't have the one that I'm particularly looking for, which is the 1951 Festival of Britain map. Um, but they did have a few others but uh my mind was not on these i was i was here for the paperback show really but it was uh it was nice to see some of this other stuff which you know you just don't see anywhere else and uh, the paper ephemera show was it was really something quite an eye-opener all the stuff that was on display and because the dealers knew that the paperback show was next door and they did bring along a fair amount of book stock as well as you'll see as we have a little look around the ephemera part of the, uh, the the fair which was literally in the adjoining room it was a slightly bigger hall than the paperback show and there was dealers with uh, like rare first editions air folio editions art books and of course paperbacks very very good to see I, uh, I was able to get in a little bit earlier um, whilst I was helping Bob set up his stall and I, I took the opportunity to go in whilst the ephemera fair was uh, whilst they were still setting up and uh, and film the stalls so uh, I had a bit of an unfettered look because later on believe me this room was packed and uh, I'm hoping that the dealers all had a very good day certainly the paperback dealers appeared to with the amount of people coming through the door And if possible, I'll go through all these uh, different stacks on, you know, virtually all the tables, so you get a really good look of what was on display. And uh, maybe I'll attempt you to uh, make the effort to go along next time round. 
if you missed this particular fair for whatever reason I know a couple of people um, were on holiday you know it's the start of the summer holidays um, other people were a little bit hindered with the uh, the partial uh, train strike um, but a few managed to get through and um, it was uh, good to see so many familiar faces who um, hadn't seen for so long On the whole, I didn't think the pricing was that far out at all. In fact, I would say there was more bargains, particularly when you factor in, if you're trying to buy some of this stuff online through eBay, you have to factor in the postage. And these books were cheap and no postage. I mean, you can't really go wrong. So buying at shows is a very good way. If you come across the books that you want, it's a great way of uh, expanding your collection. As I said, we're not even in the paperback show yet. This is all in the ephemera fair. So uh, you did uh, get your value for money, shall we say. I know historically some really good stuff has been found in the ephemera fair. So uh, it's definitely worth a look. I think the other thing about having a look through the ephemera fair is you never quite know what you're going to come across, but it also gives you ideas about what to keep an eye out for. You know, what other people cover, you may not actually, you know, even consider as a collectible. So from that point of view, it's uh, it's worth having a little eye on this market. Um, this store wasn't bad. They had all sorts of stuff, and they had this little crate of uh, children's books, picture books, and board books. And um, I came across some of these Paddington books, which tie into the... Uh, the mid to late 70s BBC animated show of uh, Paddington and I ended up picking up a few of those off this stool. I did once again a fatal mistake I filmed these videos and I come across something which I wish I'd had a closer look at and I did spot on this stool they had a little eye of the engine book which I I would have liked to have at least you know taken a look at but what can you do there's so many distractions and there's stuff going on in the background you think oh how did I miss that there it is, the Live of the Engine book. Should have at least had a look at that one. Um, lots of postcard dealers in the Ephemera Fair, and um, you know it's a fascinating subject, and there was lots and lots there for people to go through. I mean, tens of thousands of cards. Boxes and boxes of pulps, and, and even more paperbacks and magazines, loads of them, all over the place. Obviously, I, as I said, I got a lot of this footage early on before anyone had gone in and started buying. So uh, there was perhaps uh, wasn't quite this much left uh, towards the end of the day. That these were all two pounds. These books and uh, they had some really good um, good titles there for that sort of money. Lots of crime. Two pound a book wasn't bad at all. I went through all those stacks and uh, did pick up a few. Well, they were in excellent condition for the money. A couple of pounds each. And as I said, every stall gave discount of some sort. I mean, absolutely fantastic. And in fact, there were many stalls there with books literally from a pound. And they were besieged from the moment the doors opened. In fact, there they are. So that's the, the all of that stuff there was a pound a, a book. And uh, they were very, very busy. And that's uh, Dorset Bob's store. He's in the process of selling. In fact, it's pretty much set up. And uh, Bob bought along his, you know, sort of higher quality science fiction paperbacks. Really, really nice selection of those. Bought some of his nice pulps as well. Arts, prints, copies of New World. He had a really great store, I thought. And uh, he was busy all day literally we i was giving him a hand when i wasn't filming um or meeting people um i was giving him a hand and uh it was pretty much non-stop for several hours from when the doors opened literally one after another after another which is fantastic that's how you want it to be and this is good this is channel supporter and dealer mark velderman 
very very nice chap come over from Belgium for the show bought a few nice bits off him which we'll see at the end of the video there he is in front of his stall he had some great stuff everyone uh, commented on that he really did and uh, the albatross right in the front that ended up coming home with me that one that was my find of the day uh, also great to meet channel supporter Chris he'd come in he wasn't looking for anything in particular he'd just come along because he'd seen the videos and and looking forward to the show I think he really enjoyed it and we'll see a few more channel supporters as the video goes on I met loads of people at the show it was just fantastic to meet so many of them so uh, thanks to everyone who came along uh, to say hello it was really really great some more Bob stock there through a few more tables here now we will work our way around the entire dealer's room I pretty much got it all I think not all the boxes are pound books because as I said you couldn't really get near them but um, the dealers with a you know, browsable stock shall we say I pretty much got into all of that this is Bob's pulps he bought a few long boxes of pulps in what a collection this is absolutely amazing they're not cheap but you know find them in the condition that's the thing they're just not really out there not in any great numbers anyway. Now I've interspersed the video with stills that I took, so I took some photos on the day. I've also been able to borrow some photos from uh, David Hyman, another friend of mine, and uh, he took loads of stills, which I, you know, sort of neglected a little bit there. I don't know why, I was mainly concentrating on the video, of course. So thanks to David for uh, allowing me the permission to uh, use some of his still images. And this is a David Stall, absolutely fantastic. He had um, such high quality uh, books here, as you can see. I think he was telling me that these sort of came out of a news agents and they'd never even gone on the shelf. So it was like uncirculated stock. And uh, although these, you know, they were found in the UK, these are American imports and they're in just pristine condition. Absolutely awesome. And I thought his prices were very, very reasonable. I know the market for these isn't massive, and it certainly didn't seem to be massive at the show. I think sleaze is one of those genres which is in, you know, the decline, really. But there he is, there's, there's David, and uh, David and myself with Bob as well. So, uh, but yeah, very interesting store, and uh, perhaps the market isn't quite what it was, but uh, it was really good to see these. And a lot of, of course, a lot of these are by uh, authors who went on to be very, very big names. And they just cut their teeth right in this stuff just to sort of keep, keep the bills paid, really. So, um, yeah, I think David had a really, really nice selection of this sort of stuff, which I think if this was in a fair in America, he, he would be besieged because the stuff is just such great quality. Um, but over here, it was uh, um, not perhaps uh, in the massive demand that we saw um, at this particular show. So we've got a few more supporters to uh, to say hello to in a minute. And then I'm going to, um, I got the chance to interview Neil. Now Neil is the organiser of the show. He has been for, I think since 2012, he took over the reins of organising the London Paperback Show. And I think Neil provides some real insight. And uh, once again, while we're interviewing Neil, we'll have a look through uh, some of his stock as well, because he did have uh, a table there. But um, we'll just hang finish off looking through David's uh, high-grade American copies. Here's some more supporters. This was Roger, very friendly chap. Often comments on the channel. Nice to finally meet Roger in the flesh. And also Felius. He bought some nice uh, Philip K. Dick there off Bob. He did very well from what I hear. I think they were quite cheap. <laughs> And I can't for the life of me remember this young young man's name, but yeah, the UK's top Josh Kirby collector, without a doubt. Um, here we are, the room's starting to fill up now. I mean, it pretty much was. Uh, as soon as the doors were open and people started, you know, coming in, it started getting very, very busy. But that's good. And now we need to go over and uh, interview Neil.
Okay, Neil, so, Neil, you are the organiser of this London Paperback Show. To me, I'm not here as a dealer, I've come up with one, but it seems really busy and the dealers seem very happy, so... Good. Yeah, I, I am, yeah. I'm, I'm delighted because well, organize, when you organise a fair like this, it's, yeah. not, it's like when you have a party, you think, oh, is anybody going to turn up? You know? That's true, yeah. Um, and it's exceeded my expectations, really. It's oh. been busy all day long. Here we are, I think it's about, it's about half past one now. In yeah. other words, we've been going for four hours. And it's still busy. It's still busy, yeah. So absolutely. what it means is, I mean, it's a, it's a very niche collector's market. True. But it means there are still lots of people who are interested in it and, and who are willing to spend the money. Yeah. And a lot of them have come from a long way away. I mean, I've been absolutely. talking to people from Belgium, from yeah. France. Yeah, that's um, really something, isn't it? Yeah. And they come from all parts of the UK, so that's terrific. That is really good news, isn't and, it? And it's great that obviously word has got out because yeah. one of the problems with an event like this is how do you publicise it? It's tough, you do, isn't it? You do yeah. the obvious things like Facebook and put flyers out. But, but there's, there are people, particularly the older generation, who just don't touch Facebook nowadays. You know, they just, yeah. you know, my dad wouldn't go on it, for example. Yeah, and the sad thing is, I know over the next few weeks, people will contact me and say, Why didn't you tell me about the fair? Oh, I didn't know about it. And I think, I'm sorry, but how do I read This is it. Well, I mean, I'm, this is going to result in a couple of videos on the channel. And uh, you know, I'm hoping that they've been so successful that you know it definitely happens again, maybe even more than once a year. Who knows? We could tag it onto the ephemera affair. Well, for, for the, the first three or four years after I took over this fair, hmm. it was twice a year. It was right. oh, it twice in October, year. right? It was very well attended both times. Yeah. And of course, COVID hit, and then uh, which everybody, everybody who organizes these kind of events was like, Yeah, a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, and we did wonder is it ever gonna are we ever gonna come back again? Yeah, so yeah. fortunately we have come back with a vengeance. It's, well, taken, that's good. Yeah. it's taken a couple of years for people to have the confidence to come back. That's and true, even yeah. A year ago, a lot of the people who are here today wouldn't have come, they would still have been too nervous to come. That's out. true, and I have seen a couple of people with face masks on. I mean that's you know, yeah. You're going to get that at any sort of busy event, aren't you? But um, yeah, I mean, looking around, a, a nice selection. Um, I don't know if dealers had a bit of backed up stock that they'd accumulated over the last few years, but the books seem to be a lot of high quality. Other ones I've been to in the past, there was one store here where everything was a pound each, which, you know, you couldn't get near that store, maybe been busy all day. But generally, I think the quality of the books on, on offer has been well, really good. I mean, what is so wonderful about this fair, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not saying that because I organise it is that you will find stuff here that you will not find anywhere else. I mean, this yeah. is the UK's only vintage paper bags and pulp. Absolutely. You yeah. will, in this concentration of vintage paper bags and pulp, you will not find... There are, of course, there's plenty of book fairs, yeah. but you won't find this kind of paper bags. So, and, of course, we've got the Ephemera Fair tagged onto it as well, and they've brought books as well, haven't they? A couple of stores have loads of books, in fact. Um, so that was fascinating to look through all that. Yeah, we complement each other very well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's great, but, it, you know, it's... It is a struggle these days because these hotels where we mm. stage these events, uh, the the rental they charge for these rooms is so high. It's right. Like, really how much longer can we keep doing these? For? Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Hopefully we can keep going for a few more years. Yeah. Well, let's hope. Definitely. Definitely. Well, I mean, I've had a really good day. The dealers I've spoken to have all had a good day. Literally, everyone said it's been a good day. It's just, so, it's just, it's yeah. just great to be around with like-minded people, mm. chat to Absolutely. people about the things yeah. that we're passionate about. Yeah. You know, I see these wonderful paperbacks. I mean, I started buying paperbacks in the late 1960s. Right, yeah. I was about 11 years old, and I, I grew up in a town called Epsom in Surrey. Mm. And uh, there used to be an outdoor market. And I used to cycle a along there yeah. on Saturday. And there was this elderly lady, and she had about five trestle tables all around her, all piled high with paperbacks. Oh, wow, yeah. And, of course, all I had was like a couple of shillings pocket money a yeah. week. So, I, you know, you'd see all these pound book of horror stories and <laughs> think of science fiction and Elliot O'Donnell yeah. ghost stories. And, you know, when you're that age, you, thought, you want them all, don't you? Want yeah. them all, but I, could, I could only buy one yeah. each week. You know. Or blimey. Uh, or, you could, uh, or I think you could take that two, or was it three, and she'd exchange it for oh, yeah, yeah. that, that yeah. sort of um, And ever since then, I've, I've had the bug. I've caught yeah, the bug. Yeah, there you go. It doesn't take a lot, does it? And uh, that was why I was keen to keep this fair going because, yeah. as you know, it kind of died a bit of a death in 2012. Yeah. Uh, one of the organisers, um, Peter Chapman, sadly passed away. Right. So it kind of fizzled out a bit. But yeah. I thought we can't, you know, we can't. Yeah, it's too good a thing, isn't it? And um, so I think it was 2016. Yeah. In late 2016, I revived it, thinking, are we going to have any customers coming along? And yeah. It was so successful that I've kept it. 
half oh, break. Apart from the COVID break. Yeah, and that's it. Well, we're now definitely back. And um, I think there is a new audience coming into it now. I, I see it on my channel. And, you know, we've seen some of them here today. Lots of people have said they saw the YouTube advertising me and Steve, the other bookseller did. You know, we've both been sort of mentioning it on our channel to come along. And, well, um, I am very grateful to you. No, not at all. Yeah. I mean, we don't know, but it would be lovely to be able to qualify how many people came today as a result of your... Yeah, I, I think a few, certainly, you know. Yeah, a few people have, have said, you know, they've never been to something like this before. But you think, is it, they got is it half a dozen? Is it 25? Is it, four, you know... Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think quite a few. <laughs> from what, yeah. But, I mean, they've been coming up to me on Bob's store, and they've certainly been saying, yeah, they've come here, and I've come to say hello, sort of thing, you know, and they're really enjoying it. They're like, they couldn't believe what they're finding. And there's something for every pocket. If, you, if you've only got a tenner in your pocket... You could come away with ten paperbacks, you know, some holiday money, oh, which is exactly what I've done. Oh, you yeah, some great stories. I mean, my yeah. chap was saying to me, and my wife said, "I'm only allowed to spend forty pounds today." So, oh, really, <laughs> yeah, that's my budget. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. As you say, there's, there's something for there's, everyone. The paperbacks for a pound. And you think, look at a pound. This is like a sixty-year-old book. Yeah, in great condition. It's a steal. That you won't find anywhere else. Yeah. Why is it only it's a pound? Absolutely a steal. Uh, yeah. and, and elsewhere, you'll see books that are. 30, 40, 50 pounds. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I've seen a few in that that region today. Yeah, I've bought a few around the ten pound mark, so I've not done too badly. But that's sadly not the three penguins I need to finish the set. Not a sniff of them today. Oh, no, no, it's, shame, yeah. no yeah. it's, it's surprising. Some books are. You think why is this more? Is why is it more rare or more valuable than other books? But some of them just seem to have had a lower print run or something. That's it. Yeah, I think. Uh, for example, I sold yeah. uh, the film tie-in to the thing. Oh yeah, 1982. Yeah, I think. yeah. thirty-two pounds, and, and yet yeah. it's not it's not that, that old. It's not it shouldn't be that old. But they have that, those John, anything John Carpenter related movie time has been going for good money on eBay. Oh, that's true. So yeah. you need to watch my eBay videos because I, I often cover those, like Escape from New York, the, the thing. Yeah, that's and the, I've seen those go for a few pounds. You know, so. Escape from New York, I think, it's kind of like about sixty. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 Even just well, reprints of jewels seem to be expensive at the moment. Really? I don't know why that is. Even it's, reprints of it. There must be millions of those. That's, you yeah, would so. think that, but who can tell? You know, it's a funny old market, is the world of paperbacks, you know? But anyway, well, thank you very, very much for holding the show, though. It's been... I've had a brilliant time, and uh, loads of people have enjoyed it, so... Uh, and, and thank yeah. you, Jules, for uh, supporting us, and thanks for coming along. And, no, it's been uh, brilliant fun. A pleasure talking to you. Let's do it again soon. Yes, indeed. So now we're back looking at Neil's store. And uh, Neil had a really good mix. I went back a couple of times and uh, I completely missed it at the end of the day. I realised I hadn't looked at the boxes underneath the store. I'd just done the stuff on top. And as you can see, he had a really nice collection, some some good uh, movie tie-ins, some Bond books. He was the only one with any substantial Bond books at all at the show. Didn't see much in the way of Bond this time round. I don't know why that is. I think they're just uh, in people's collections, maybe. quite tempted with the aliens book but uh, you got to draw the line that's quite scarce that yesterday's enemy that's a obscure hammer tie-in hey for Andromeda Space 1999 some nice Avengers ones as well that was good to see um, old prisoner as well a British prisoner Yeah, there was definitely stuff to have if you were a TV and movie tie-in collector. There was enough there, you would have been happy. I'm sure you would have found some stuff. Yeah, some good titles there, as you can see. I ended up getting a fair old pile of uh, Elf Neo, and uh, I said, we'll have a, a brief look through my pickups. That's scarce. I wish I picked that one up now. We'll have a brief look through my pickups 
at the end of this video. Just take 10 minutes to have a quick zip through. Another great film, that Willard. I would have picked that up if it was in slightly better nick, that particular one. But yeah, we'll have a look through through what I picked up, and I, I think I did fantastic, really. In fact, I was really surprised at how much I've actually ended up bringing back. Um, so, surprised but pleased, shall we say. And I think I've uh, I earned the trip, as it were. You know, I really did enjoy it, and uh, I think I've found some nice stuff to add to my collection, which is what it's all about. But I didn't really, I, I was zooming and ahhing about, it's going to be quite a long video this one, and I was zooming and ahhing about possibly making it into two, but I think it's better just to do the whole thing in one, and then I'll just do a separate sort of video going through my pickups in a bit more detail for the people who want to have a look at that. Uh, once again, this is still on Neil's store, and he had some good stuff here, some of these nice um, copies of the, the Manhunt uh, pulp, you don't really see those in the UK very often. Got a, got a couple of those. I've actually got number one of that one, and uh, it's a great magazine. Although the early ones had massive print runs, it's the later ones which are actually uh, uh, much harder to get hold of. But yeah, I'd love to collect those. I just need a nice uh, big run to start me off, you know, a big wedge of them. Yeah, lots and lots of good stuff on Neil's store. I think he had a good day, um, by all accounts, so uh, that's good. These are very nice, these weird tales. I think if you collected pulp, you would have been all right. You would have uh, seen enough to uh, scratch the itch, I reckon. And there was a mixture of British and American copies as well. It wasn't all the British ones. some more in here that I ended up picking up. I said quite a few of the really nice uh, pan editions but you know the ones I've already got so I didn't want to double up because I knew you know my copies were pretty much okay two saint ones there as well they're both a nice pair and quite a few digits in that um, one thing was uh, there was absolutely no phone reception because we were sort of in the the bowels of the of the hotel so the only way to get a, a mobile signal was to actually go outside um, and I think that did create some problems for the people who um, take card payment as well, which most people didn't, in all honesty. It was it was a very much a cash environment, which I think historically it always has been. Uh, people like to do a bit of wheeling and dealing, and cash is king. But certainly in the ephemera fair, there was uh, dealers who took card. But it's interesting. I've seen at the toy fairs more and more people move to uh, taking card now. But there was a cash point less than 10 minutes away so um it wasn't like there was no access to any cash around a little run of hank jackson there i think um that was the only stall i i saw with any sort of hank jackson in um in numbers i don't know how collectible they are these days but uh, as you can see, at, at points like there, the show was absolutely rammed and all the stalls were super busy. Um, this is the ephemera fair at the, about the same time, equally very, very busy. This is once uh, everyone was in. <laughs> A few people seeing me filming in that. I, honestly, I had loads of people come up to me. Um, they'd seen the channel. A few people said, oh, I recognize your voice before they recognize me. So uh, <laughs> it made me smile. The 
experience is the frenzy around the one pound bookstore literally cases and crates and bags full of them literally it spilled out onto the floor all these books there at a pound a pop i mean people were snapping there was loads of science fiction in there loads a couple more channel supporters here this was sean very nice to meet sean he was over from ireland um yeah very, very friendly chat and uh, peter as well he was on the lookout for vintage penguin and doctor who books um don't think he got much in the way of doctor who i hardly saw any there there's that uh, morris from uh, all you need is books zardos perusing bob's stool Morris was the one responsible for the one pound book, so he couldn't actually get near his own stall. Here's uh, my friend Tim Kitchen picking up some very rare promotional items from Steve Chibnall. Um, some pan catalogues and bits and pieces. No doubt these will be on uh, Tim's website, ticket.net. So uh, very jealous of that. There's some lovely stuff there. Very, very nice. Steve have brought it along. Nice to see the pan promotional stuff don't often get to see that so no doubt Tim was very happy there he is with his little haul nice to see Tim we weren't expecting him because he was struggling with the trains but he got there which was fantastic now we're gonna have a look through a few more tables here I said I tried to be comprehensive and not miss anything out but there was an awful lot to get through but I think I got most of it. I think this is actually on um, Steve Chibnall's stall, I believe. And um, Steve has recently had a book published, which is uh, looks fantastic. I had my first flick through of an actual copy at the show, and it looked really good. And there was another Steve there. He was Steve the designer, who did all the layouts. And he did a magnificent job there. Um, so I am going to contact the publisher to see if I can get a review copy. And if so, I will do a dedicated video on the channel for you to have a have a really good look at the book because um, it's uh, filled with uh, book cover goodness, which I know we all like on this channel. William Irish there, quite a scarce one in the uh, American pocket. And good stuff here. All great authors, Harry Whittington's, excellent. Very, very nice. Yeah, some good stuff. Lots of things I've never ever seen before. And that's always uh, fun, you know, when you're coming across stuff which is brand new. You just didn't know it existed or you've never actually set eyes on a physical copy before. Very, very good. Now we have actually got one more video interview coming up, which is with Ryan Hughes. Now Ryan was there, um, the publisher came along and brought about 20 or 30 copies of his hardback Ray Guns and Rocket Ships, which um, is an absolutely fantastic book and we'll have another look through in a minute. But it was great uh, for Ryan to be there. He, he, I think he sold and signed all the copies that were delivered and uh, lots of people hadn't actually seen it before in the flesh. I make it my book of the year last year because it was so good. And um, Ryan did a, a you know, really fantastic job with this particular one. Um, so that will be our final interview, which will be coming up in just a moment. But until then, we can enjoy these uh, gorgeous vintage paperbacks. 
some British pulps there, Darcy Ginto. Don't see those very often anymore. Now our interview with Ryan. And there's the uh, shop promotional items I got from Steve Chibnall. Very, very nice. I got a couple of those. So Ryan, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you, Jules. What a show it is. It's packed, isn't it? It's, it's heaving. Yeah. It's really, really good. And uh, you brought copies of your book along. I did. Which was uh, fantastic. My book of the year last year. Well, we much appreciate that. <laughs> um, no, not a problem. So if anyone hasn't actually seen that video, um, I'll pop a little, uh, the, the card up now, and I'll pop a link to it at the end of this particular video. So Reagan and Rocket Ships. I've got to ask, how long did that take to put together? Um, well, it took a while, but I think mm -hmm. a lot of that was me just sort of collecting these books over very long periods. Yeah. Probably the earliest one I found was Rodent Mutation, which oh, I found yeah. in the jungle sale, and probably I was about 14 or 15. I'm very jealous. That's the new that one. <laughs> Is that one of your uh, holy grails? It, it's on the list, yeah. On the list. I, I did miss out on a, on a tatty one for about 45 quid. I thought that's a bit ridiculous for a form to bits. Yeah, yeah. Now that seems cheap, I don't know. It just well, doesn't seem to turn up. That's the one I think that opened my uh, eyes to collecting this mm. obscure vintage sci fi. Yeah. But so the collection has built over many, many years since then. And yeah. um, I scanned them all in and did a print on demand version just for my own oh, amusement. Right. Yeah. So it wasn't yeah. fashion, it didn't have a introduction, but it was no. just a way of collating everything that I had in one record, record book, yeah. yes. Yeah. And then Yak at Carrera Press saw that and said, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'd like to publish this. Wow. And so at that point, I sort of began to sort of be more serious about filling in the gaps hmm. and designing it and yeah. writing the introduction and all that it. So um, there are many books in there that I don't have that yeah. have been, scans have been loaned from friends oh, collectors and, that, yeah. and, and whatnot. Um, and we don't make any claims that it's it's complete. Um, oh well, no, I mean, so it's, it's a cross section. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Is that the slipcase? This is the slipcase. I don't think I've ever seen that one. So is it uh, nice? Oh yeah, lovely. Yeah, that's very very nice. Um, so we we did it on Kickstarter, yeah. and um, so there were various levels um, that you could back it on. Know, so how I managed to you, completely miss the Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you backed it on Kickstarter and um, went for the deluxe version, you, yeah. you got it in the same place. Oh, right, I see. But I the see. interior is, is the same. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, I mean, what a great book. As I said, I mean, just my book of the year last year. I really enjoyed it. So, I first came across you, was it Revolver? When you yes. were doing, was it a Down Dare thing? Yes. Yes, that was probably 1991. Right, and I opened my comic ago. shop in 92. You had a comic shop? Yeah, yeah, in Plymouth oh. called Purple Haze, yeah. Oh, so that ran from 92 to 2001. Oh. Uh, but um, I used to have, I used to collect 2000 DI, I had all the yeah. offshoots and angles and artwork, and obviously Revolver was sort of under that umbrella, wasn't it, a bit? It was, I mean, I, I saw, I mean, I did do some comic strips a few years ago when Grant Morrison, who wrote um, Down Dare, yeah. was editor of Heavy Metal, so oh, I do, yeah. I just don't have the time these days, but um, I still have a love for the form, and, yeah. um, so we collaborated on a few short strips back then, but uh, yeah, that was sort of right at the beginning of, you know, I just graduated from art college, yeah. I think, oh, right. um, oh, wow. but I then yeah. sort of veered off into mainstream illustration and graphic yeah. design and right. various other things. Yeah. Um, all of which are on my website. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, interest. Um, what is the? Uh, is it right? It's ryanews.com. Okay. Yeah. Easy to find. Then. Easy yeah. to find. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, but it's funny that you should remember that. Yeah. I, I feel like I've had like I don't know three or four careers in my life. It's funny, uh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh wow. And well, was this a surprise then? I mean, has the book been a success? Um, we. Uh, Yes, I, yeah. I think that with, all of, with any of these books, um, they're, they're not going to be sort of as absolutely best-selling no. 
sensations because of the, you're selling to a very uh, niche passionate but niche yeah, audience. Yeah. So um, we had no um, you know, idea that we were going to sell yeah. you know, hundreds of thousands, but you know, a couple of thousand copies, oh, uh, yeah, beautifully yeah. produced. Beautifully back. produced. That was so know, nice. it, it was a labour of love. Yeah. So I'm basically producing something that I wish I had on my bookshelf. Right. And yeah. if we can cover our costs, then we'll all make a little bit of money on top. And yeah. Yeah, all, all is great. Oh, that's fantastic. And any plans for something similar? What, another volume? Not at the moment, no. Um, I'm, uh, there's a few other books that I'm working on at the moment, some of which um, I'm, I'm writing novels at the moment. Okay, and, yeah. Um, I'm sort of about a year and a half late on the the, the new one okay, that I'm supposed, right. to, I'm supposed to be working on. Um, but other than that, um, a few other sort of art book mm. type collections of, yeah. of one, one on an artist whose work I really like. Right. Another which is still in very early stages. Mm. Um, but I did a I did a book on Chris Foss for oh, Titan some yeah. years ago. That's so that yeah. sort of is this goes up to about nineteen seventy and then yeah. obviously when you're into the seventies you're into sort of Chris Foss, Bruce Pennington yeah. and their so very specific era. Yeah. 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 And so everything changes quite dramatically yeah. at this point. So this book sort of takes you up to that yeah. period of flux and then I thought that was a good place to end. Yeah. Like. I mean, I would love to see a book that covered all of the 70s and 80s. Yeah. I'm yeah, not sure I'd yeah. be the person to do it because this was a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's so it's finding uh, we, time. Yeah, and uh, uh, we've definitely got the collectors uh, we can yeah. contribute to. Um, yeah, and I was just thinking, yeah, a book of similar to that with um, all those 70s ones. I, I recently covered, uh, did a video on the New English Library Science Fiction Monthly. Oh, I have I one. quite a few issues of that. Yeah, well, I, I managed to get the last one just last week that I was after. So it's 27 in the right. set to get, uh, or 28 rather. And um, when you see that artwork really up big, like yeah. that, it just looks amazing. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, I remember um, buying that when, I remember from my mum bought it when mm. I was a kid. And there was one particular uh, illustration by Bruce Pennington for the Pastel City, I think, right. and it scared the bejesus out of <laughs> yeah. this, this vulture sort of hovering over this right. desolate landscape. I, I think I know the one that you mean. And yeah. His, uh, Bruce Pennington, they seem to be, any book with his sort of jackets on now seem to be like snapped up, it doesn't yeah. matter what they are. I know he did the, the June ones, didn't yes, they? yes. they've become really hot, because yeah. it's a hot property and his great jackets. I, yeah, for me when I read those books, his uh, um, interpretation mm. of them was key to my yeah, It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and you just sort of remember, and that's the sort of the edition that you remember. For mm. me when I read June, it was when the David Lynch movie came out, I had the film time, that was my no, first yeah, edition yeah. of it, which is probably, I wouldn't even touch that nowadays. You know? I, I think, that's, I think that, David, that David Lynch version has its moments, I know it's... Yeah, I, I like him as a director, I really do. Yeah. Yeah. No, there are bits of it that I think work really well, bits of it that don't work mm. very well. But I, it was I was unfairly maligned, I think. Uh, yeah. True, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like the, the, the latest film, though. I'm looking forward to number two. Yes. Uh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for popping in on this very busy day, Ryan. I know you've, no sold lots, you've signed lots today as well, haven't you? Yeah. It's, been, uh, it's been good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Available on... And all good bookshops and online retailers, or directly from the publishers at Carrera Press. Oh, brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you. Great to meet a couple more supporters here. This is Kat. Came along on the back of uh, seeing my preview. I think she had a really interesting day. And also long-time channel supporter, my friend Liam there. He uh, was regaling me about a, a find of recent Penguin specials that he got in, uh, in a charity shop. Just £1 each. It was the first 40. Right back to number one, vintage Penguin specials from 1936. Uh, £1 each, all in dust wrappers. He did very, very well there. So I'm very jealous. And uh, thanks for coming along, Liam. It was really good to meet you. Now we got a little bit more of the basically what we haven't actually uh, gone through to to round out the video really with a few more st stalls that we've not looked at in detail it's quite interesting there's no like universal way of actually displaying books but um, these ones in like the white tubs is quite a good way 
or they take up quite a bit of room. It's a good way to flick through, keep the books nice and protected, and they're easy to transport as well. Once again, I missed uh, one of those minder books I actually do, I am after, there's two, and I'm after the other one of the ones that are there, and I just completely forgot it, flicking through these. You know what it's like. But uh, this this chap, uh, although a lot of it wasn't priced, most of it was, but not all of it. Um, but it was uh, still, you know, nice to, to have a look at it. A few westerns there. Now uh, this is uh, Mark's store. Mark was over from Belgium and uh, he brought some really really nice stuff and uh, hopefully he did all right I, I mean I don't know how good a day he had but he deserved to do well because he had some really nice stuff there more American editions rather than British although he had some British stuff But yeah, lots of lots of scarce little items, and I ended up buying three books from Mark, and once again he gave me a little bit of a discount, which is always appreciative. You can sort of see the quality of his books. That's one of the ones I picked up. That's an absolute paperback classic, that one. And uh, what did he have on that? Was it ten pounds before discount? So yeah, it's, it's got a couple of creases on it, but it's just a classic jacket and I was very, very pleased to get that one also picked up that which was a death on the Nile for £12 before discount another absolute steal in my opinion I've seen them go for a lot more than that but I was just um, you know just happy to get another albatross crime and particularly an Agatha Christie out of the way that was really good That was a lovely copy of that one, but a lovely price as well, £15. I think this seems to be the way for really nice top grade copies of the, the Pound Book Horror Stories. I think that's you know over the top considering they have big print runs, but there's the demand there. And try finding them in nice condition. It's very, very difficult, you know. It really, really is. That was nice as well. I've never seen that version of uh, the first Bantam of a Brave New World. Another one there, a nice early pocket, and uh, another Bantam Hiroshima, John Hershey. Recommend that. That's a great book if you've never read it. And that was I owned an R because I've got it, but it's uh, got a faded spine. But I thought there's other fish to fry at this particular show, so I left that one behind. That was good as well. I fancied that one, but I've got to try and stick to the British Simonons rather than going down the American route, unless I can help it. Lots of great stuff here, beautiful cover art. And very nicely presented. Mark, you had a great stool, one of the one of the best there, in my opinion. Fancied that one, but it wasn't a map back, so I put it behind. That one I did get, which was uh, the uh, the Hitchcock tie into Vertigo. It hasn't got the movie cover but that's that is the tie in addition to that one. And uh, I couldn't leave that behind, it just looked too good. <laughs> and a couple of later Dells. Yes, lots and lots of good stuff to see. I mean, I absolutely had such a fantastic time at this show. It's been a long time coming, and I think that was the overriding opinion of everyone. It just, 
it was a really enjoyable show and I don't know anybody who didn't enjoy themselves as I said you could have come along with a tenor and come away with 10 books you know there were dirt cheap books there there was stuff in the outside as well and uh, definitely a show which uh, I recommend coming to if you get the chance so I'm sure there'll be another one some dealers were mentioning they'd like it to be back to being twice a year well obviously that depends and the cost of rent in these hotels is dramatically risen so they have to do their sums and, and tot it up but I think on the back of this I hopefully this is said blimey I've got to get to that show um, if they do it again and they will do it again eventually so um, you know keep an eye on the channel keep an eye on the, uh, the, the the big paperback Facebook groups and you'll know well in advance when these uh, shows are going to be so you can sort of plan accordingly yes very very good and uh well although i i traveled a long way i left very early and it was a long tiring day it was uh, so so rewarding i just loved it it really really was you know by the time it sort of got started and we're in the thick of it it was almost time to go it seemed it were, the day just flew by so quickly it really was fantastic Or in a Jim Thompson's here. This is really good to see as well. More modern ones, of course. These are the re-releases, but even so, very nice to see. Yeah, good stuff. Very, very good stuff. And here's the last few photos. There's the two Steves. With Steve's book there, Miniature Marvels. Very, very nice book, that one. Worth tracking down. As I said, I will try and get um, a copy from the publisher for that one to review on the channel. And uh, a few last stills from the dealer's room. And some of the great stalls were there. Great stock as well. There's Neil again there, looking very happy. Probably just made a big sale. <laughs> There's uh, Steve Holland. quick snap of some of the dealers at the end of the day and punters as well of course everyone was so friendly they were just there to chat and literally immerse themselves in books these are fantastic these uh, on Bob's store here these lovely new worlds are gorgeous and just so much to see it really was great there's me filming <laughs> next to Mark quite early in the day there and there's uh, Bob eyeing up a couple of potential buys that's those cheap penguins yeah brilliant absolutely brilliant So a quick look at the bits and pieces that I picked up at the fair. I'll go into these in more detail with a dedicated video next week. But this is one that uh, my friend Dorset Bob brought along. It's uh, from 1993 and it's a little look at uh, Penguin Books. Um, this was very, very nice. This was off uh, Steve Chibnall's stall and it's um, a cardboard panther show card i believe is what these are called uh, for 21 years of panther publishing so i guess this is um uh, what early to mid 1970s something like that that was about eight pounds and um this was very very nice this is an original digit books order form uh from 1960 i got this one once again from steve uh chibnall for 25 pounds in the end that was uh, the dearest thing i actually bought but very very scarce that um so superb so that was the sort of the larger items 
Okay, on to the actual paperbacks now. Now I did a little tot up and um, it looks like I bought about 70 books, which is uh, actually more than I thought. Um, these were sort of later 60s penguin crime titles. These were like a pound each. So uh, I do, there was no way I was going to leave some of this stuff behind. And even if I'm doubling up, which I don't think I am, um, I won't mind because they're in you know, pretty de decent condition on the whole here. Um, so real mixture of stuff. There's a digit there. This is a, a, a Tom, Tom Adams Christie famous one with the, the wasp cover which I didn't actually have um, that one I also didn't have old movie tie in this one to Superman 3 been picking up a few of these this is another nice uh, uh, digit this was eight pounds almost every dealer that I spoke to in fact I think they pretty much all gave a bit of discount which was quite nice to have uh, another four square there at SF1 a Fontana quite a fairly early one Picked up a few pans, which was great. There was quite a lot of pan around and in varying conditions, but um, I don't think too expensive. Um, this one I got off a of Dorset Bob. This is a holiday read. Been very much looking forward to finding the Panther first of that one. So glad to get that. Another old pan here. Uh, Panther SF. This is just like a pound. It's almost too good to leave behind, isn't it? Um, that one on reflection, I suspect I've actually got it, but it's quite an early four square and i don't think i've got it in that condition so i'm not going to be too fussed about that um, another digit there quite a nice one so a pan that i haven't got the penguin this one once again i got this one off bob this is also um, an upgrade uh, to the one that i've actually got it's got a bit of tanning but mine is is was much worse condition than i thought so uh, that's why i picked that one up start of that series Another old pan that I was uh, missing. Glad to get that one. Recently featured in my uh, vintage nurse paper packs novel. Um, the one and only Dell map pack I got at the show today. So pleased to get that one. That was off. Uh, who was that off? I think it was off um, Mark. Uh, another uh, four square. It's a Woodhouse four square. One of the TV tie ins there. Another movie tie in there. A pan one. That's uh, Oliver Reed and. Uh, uh, Michael Crawford there, so The Jokers, not a film I actually recognise. Uh, another um, a pan there, this one was a pound, it's um, an Ed McBain in pan. I'm pretty sure I've got it, but not in such nice condition. If we uh, slide those to the back to get the next pile out. That's uh, a later printing of uh, Mysterious Affair at Styles, definitely didn't have that edition of it. A very, very early uh, pocket book, pocket number 35 for Bo Jess. This is like a pound as well. Um, a more modern SF anthology for Arrow. Got some good names on the back there. Once again, that was just a pound. Um, a pan SF, I'm pretty sure, uh, Penguin rather, SF, I'm pretty sure I've not got it. Although it's not in the greatest of condition, it has got a crease down the spine. If it is one, if it's an SF title that I've not got, I do want to keep that for sure. Um, once again, a Lancer, Michael Walcott, this was just a pound. I mean, when they're that sort of price, it's difficult to turn some of this stuff away. Um, a nice Fontana there, which I definitely haven't got. Nice condition, a copy of that one. And this is one of the, uh, the three sort of slightly more expensive books that I bought today. Now this one, although it's not mint, it is an absolutely iconic cover um, in the world of paperback collecting. This, this one was, um, before any discount, it was £10, um, and that was off um, uh, Mark from Belgium. I also picked up this one, which was uh, Vertigo, which is the, uh, the tie-in to the Hitchcock film. Not a classic cover, but that is the original cover for that one from 1958. So I got that one as well off him, and I got one more off him. That was quite nice. That was a four square, uh, which I hadn't seen before, an oldest one. Thought that was quite nice. Bit of spine lean, but it'd be okay. Um, that one I have already got. Um, I want to take this on holiday with me. It's the first Death World one. I've got an absolutely mint one, which was too good to read in actual fact. So nice to read the original Penguin edition of that. Um, another odd Penguin SF title. Just one spine crease. Pretty sure I haven't got it, but for a pound, I wasn't going to leave it behind in all honesty. Um, a pan Colin Wilson that I definitely haven't got. Man Without a Shadow. Um, I picked these up at the Ephemera Fair. This is four Paddington Bear books. These are for the BBC tie-in series, um, and um, I really like those. I've got a few books related to that particular series, which is also being remastered for Blu-ray at the moment, so uh, 
quite like that Paddington uh, BBC series. Another lovely pan there with a PEF cover. Definitely haven't got that Ellery Queen title. Uh, Frederick Mullally. Um, these are just odd pans. Uh, I just, I'm almost certain I haven't got. Here's another Ellery Queen with a PEF cover. It's in really, really nice condition. So they're too good to turn down. Now, um, I almost ought to do these separately, but it's as they come. So I picked up uh, a run of the paperback science fantasies off uh, Dorset Bob. I've been after these for quite a while. A lot of them have got uh, like these lovely Keith Roberts uh, jackets. And um, Bob has got such great runs of these. Um, it was nice um, to go through and uh, sort of take my pick of the best copies. And uh, yeah, it's got a lot of authors in here in this particular period that I really like, including people like Harry Harrison and uh, Keith Roberts, oldest there. So some good stuff. A nice uh, uh, 60s penguin there that I didn't have. Going over here again. I said I didn't do too badly. Here's a little digit here. Picked up a couple of digits that I didn't have. This is another one. I'm sort of too good to leave behind that. 1952 for Popular Library for Jailbait. That's a real classic title. I've got another wedge to come over, so I'm going to need to make a little bit more room. But we're almost there. And as I said, I'll go through and clean all these, debag them and clean them in a video uh, next week. Um, a Ballantine SF title. Um, well, actually, not SF. It's a more mystery one. But it's a suspense, which is uh, really good. I mean, once again, it was only a pound, so I couldn't leave it behind. It's got a little 10 p on. Might be able to do something with that next week. Um, another we'll shoot. Uh, penguin. An odd... Um, door which I couldn't remember if I had it but once again for a pound too good to leave behind and that was quite nice I know I haven't got that one nebula award stories uh, panther sf uh, this one's a hardback so I just uh, pop it in the mystery of Agatha Christie I've got this one for my sister once again it was a pound absolutely fantastic and also in Agatha Christie this was my buy of the day was at uh, the albatross for death on the nile um, in a dust wrapper very very good um £12 before discount. I think I've done rather well on that particular one. Um, we've got some more science fantasies now. These are from uh, Dorset Bob. And these are all, as it was a complete unbroken run of the, the paperback run. And beautiful condition, as you can see. Absolutely minters. Which is uh, the way to have them, if you can find them. Bob has got some more in his stock, so just uh, just get in touch. Mr. Book 451 at outlook.com so absolutely delighted to be getting these good stuff eh this is the one I most wanted to get out of the entire run was the first uh, part of the Furies which I read last year that's really good another odd pan and then found this one as well for a pound this is one of the keyhole crimes published in the uk by lawrence block no less so as i said a fantastic haul i'm over the moon with what i got and uh, we'll be uh, giving this all a clean along with some other recent additions in a video in about a week's time and there we are that is the end of an absolutely epic day i am exhausted the dealers seem delighted i've had a brilliant day let's get home and get this video edited thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed it do please give the video a thumbs up don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not already for regular vintage paperback content and i look forward to seeing you again very soon bye